What's sexual intercourse? Taboos about sex, fears about desire, and squeamishness about discussing our bodies has led to an abundance of whispers about sex. These whispers result in some serious misunderstandings that are sometimes hilarious and other times dangerous. Drip. We spoke to some sex ed experts to break down five myths about sex and the education surrounding it. We're gonna be talking about the penis! <laughs> we'll be talking about the vagina! Number one, the you can't get pregnant ifs. Teens and adults too have no shortage of questions about what can or cannot cause pregnancy and what sorts of extenuating circumstances can impact a sperm's journey to its would-be egg. An egg? You mean like a chicken egg? Here's some popular, can I get pregnant ifs? Floating semen in a pool or hot tub? No. Having sex in a jacuzzi or hot shower? Yes. If someone ejaculates inside a vagina, water, heat, or chlorine will not neutralize or wash out sperm. What about oral sex? No. Having sex on your period? Yes. This is unlikely because ovulation usually occurs in the two weeks after your period, but it's still possible. Number two, there's no male birth control. It's true that a male pill is still in the works, but men actually have one of the safest and most accessible forms of birth control easily at their disposal. The beautiful, flexible, STI and pregnancy preventing condom. Use one of these at all times. Number three, condoms aren't effective. A ripped condom is the center of so many rom-com plot lines that some people approach our rubber friends with skepticism. However, according to Planned Parenthood, condoms are 98% effective at preventing pregnancy. And they're also the only method of birth control that also protects against most STIs. People have other fears and misconceptions about condoms, like that you need to find the right size. Oh, whoops, oh, I dropped my monster condom that I use for my magnum dong. A condom can typically stretch over someone's forearm without breaking. Certainly, condoms should be comfortable, but there's no need to buy into Magnum marketing ploys or excuses. Most condoms should fit most penises. Uh, just a second. Number four, men and women have sexual peaks at different ages. A myth has persisted for years that men have a sexual peak in their teenage years and women peak in their mid thirties. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> <laughs> this is untrue in a few ways. This myth likely originated from research about sexuality in the middle of the 20th century that actually counted up how many orgasms people were having at different ages. Other research has quantified hormone levels at different stages, which changes in accordance with puberty and age, but also fluctuates with life stressors and major life events like pregnancy. So the very idea of a peak is a wishy-washy one, and there's no universal age in which one peaks. Women reach their sexual peak at whatever age Jan was last week. Number five, consent is just about sex. Consent is a topic that translates to many areas of life. Many sex ed advocates say that one of the best ways to ensure a comprehensive sexual education and therefore healthier relationships is by beginning sex ed early even as early as preschool. That might sound wild, but teaching children about communication and boundaries at a young age can benefit them immensely down the line. Let's try to draw a picture of how we think a baby looks inside the mother. Myths about sex will surely continue to abound. But I think I finally got this safe sex thing down pat. But the next time you think you've come across one, think of what happens in a game of telephone. When clear information is only allowed to be spoken in whispers, the truth often gets jumbled as hell.